Hey, it's Botanical Brian here at Colonial Gardens and I'm hanging out in our blackberry patch today with the honeybees. And bees play an important role in our ecosystem and in our food system. In fact, uh, honeybees and pollinators in general are responsible for helping with the life cycle of more than 80% of the world's plants. So without pollinators, we would have a lot less plants in the world and we'd have a lot less food to eat. And so today we're gonna to talk about pollinators and the roles that they play. We're gonna talk about the process of pollination. We're going to talk about the different types of pollinators and how they get around and what they do. And we're also gonna talk about things that you can do in your home to help the pollinators and also to attract pollinators to your yard and protect them. And also just raise uh, awareness of pollinators and how important they are. So first let's talk about pollination. And I brought a lily plant in here with me. So pollination is the process of a pollinator taking pollen granules from the anther of the plant and then depositing it on the stigma of another flower. And then, so what happens is down in here are nectar glands. And nectar is what the bees are looking for. Nectar is what they take home and they feed to their hive and it keeps them going, it keeps them alive. And so the bee comes down in here and he passes this anther. And anther is what produces the pollen. In fact, if you look, you can see a little bit of pollen on the leaf here. It's that orange substance on the leaf. So as the bee comes down through there, he hits the anther and anther and pollen is then deposited on the bee's body, on hairs that the bee has on his body. Then the bee flies away to another flower and as he flies into that flower, then the pollen is caught by the stigma. There's the stigma right there. And then the pollen is transferred down there through the stigma, through the pistil, and in the bottom is an ovary. And then the pollen is accepted by the ovary and there a seed is born. Not just the seed is born, but also with, with things like a blackberry, the fruit is born. So let's go over here to this blackberry flower. So let's take a look at these blackberry flowers as they develop. So here we have the flowers and you can see all of the different parts of the reproductive system. And then right here, you can see that that's been pollinated. And that's starting to develop into a fruit. And down here, you can actually see the blackberry forming. And the blackberry, it's a small blackberry. And then as it gets bigger, it turns larger and larger. And then as we go down, you can see it maturing, starting to turn red, then it turns purple, and then you have the finished product. And when you open it up, you can actually see, you can't see them because they're tiny, but there is the blackberry seed. And then the bird comes by and the bird eats the blackberry and then flies around and through its excrement, the seed is deposited back on the ground and it grows another blackberry plant. And then the blackberry plant grows up, produces flowers, produces more blackberries and the whole process starts all over again. It's called a life cycle. And the bees are a very important part of the plant's life cycle. In fact, pollinators in general are a very important part of plant life cycles. And so we're gonna go across the street, we're gonna talk about a few more types of plants and a few more different types of pollinators, but for right now, I'm just gonna eat a few more of these blackberries and we'll see you across the street. All right, we're back over at the nursery checking on our pollinator garden and we have a bloom. Our zinnia is blooming. And so what we're hoping is now that we have some blooms, the butterflies will come and visit our garden. So keep an eye out for those butterflies. I also wanted to check on our experiment. So if you remember a few weeks ago, we cut the tip out of our Cosmos plant and then the other Cosmos plant we left grow naturally. And what happened where we cut the tip out is two new shoots came up, whereas on the one that we didn't cut, only one shoot came up. So now I'm going to take one of those two shoots and I'm gonna pinch the tip out of it. And now we will see what happens when you do a second pinch on the Cosmos plant. So keep your gardens watered and come on back next week and we'll have another episode of The Learning Garden. <laughs>